now we'll go ahead and we'll load in my uh, my flight plan. That was hot. to take us to start, uh, start off with Started off with a crash. <laughs> but not make it help. Uh, let's check over a few things. everything off here. Next it seems to be working. battery on. Don't work. Not sure what happened now. So, uh, pull the mixture out a little bit. Echo Niner 5 traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is taxiing to runway 28. Echo Niner 5 traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is taxiing to runway 28.
Echo 9 or 5 traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is taxiing to runway 28. Light like in front of me. What's that for? Radio. Oh, well, okay, we have parts. Touch. Echo 9 or 5 traffic Cessna Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra taking off runway 28 south departure. I'm using a, I'm using a headset and track IR, so uh, you got to figure out what adjustment I got to change. I was using the uh, uh, my valve index, but uh, 
since uh, the, uh, we don't have VR for a Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, I've got to do something different. So let me see if I can pick it up in OBS. I'm probably be just trying to make sure I don't. Uh, everything goes okay here. Something really strange. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, Benny, is the uh, volume better now? One, two, three, one, two, three. I will, uh, I'm going to turn my plane down. Okay, I'm going to turn the plane down. I think it's too loud.
Okay, that's loud enough that I know I know what's going on. So, and hopefully I'm uh, more uh, more hearable. <laughs> Alrighty, I got a skill. I'm a bit off course here. Got to figure out what I'm doing. Thank you. Yeah, so we're in uh, we're in southern uh, Sierra, southern Arizona. This is where I was stationed at. Uh, I was stationed in Fort Huachuca, and uh, I was there for a year. Um, so, so I'm taking off from uh, Benson and flying down to Tombstone, then to Bisbee, Douglas, and Douglas is right on the border of Mexico. And then over to another airport in Bisbee, and then to Sierra Vista. Uh, Sierra Vista and Fort Huachuca uh, basically are, um, they're right next door to each other. So the airport is shared with uh, Fort Huachuca and with Sierra Vista. So, uh, so I'm going to end up uh, landing at the Air Vista. Uh, but this is the first time I've streamed uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator. And, uh, and I've been flying it for about um, about two weeks. Wow. Trying to get my plane back on course. I'm supposed to be flying on this magenta line here, but uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, getting everything uh, set up, I kind of uh, kind of lost track of my flying. But all good now. We'll be we'll be back on course shortly. Yep, Southern Arizona, a lot of nothing. <laughs> it's beautiful, it really is, and, and it really is, um, the, uh, the textures and stuff are just, just amazing. And, uh, I know when, uh, when I, uh, landed, uh, when I, when I land back in Sierra Vista, uh, you can see the Segura cactuses, and uh, they are, it's just so cool that uh, wherever you go, the vegetation matches. Oh, cool, very cool. Yeah, I've done, I've done quite a few landings. Oh, I've been, I've been really happy. Um, something that's, you gotta be kind of comfortable flying, but um, but group flights are a trip. So you can basically go on the uh, on the world map, and if you know, um, uh, if you know, uh, like say, if you're watching a Twitch stream and, and they're acceptable to it, uh, Basically, you can you can join like a group flight either on the ground or in the air, and uh, so if you want to do it in the air, you can just find uh, one of the people flying, just click on the plane and say departure. You basically will launch right in the air, so you're basically behind the person that's flying, and uh, and it, it's like it's the coolest thing I've ever done, and uh, it's just so much fun, and uh, so I uh, I did like a group flight like uh, through the Alps that was awesome that was a lot a lot of fun and uh, I did my first one I tried was out of uh, Colorado and uh, that failed miserably I, I uh, I'm used to flying at sea level and uh, but uh, but in Colorado we were at uh, 55 or 6500 feet and I'm in a Cessna one just the same same Cessna I have and, uh, and I didn't realize I had to adjust the mixture. I crashed on takeoff. I tried to do it three different times. I finally got it to fly on the third time, but it was so much. Oh, Ray. 
waiting. They were getting their back under control here. <coughs> Yeah, so I took like, uh, I think I'm on my second week, because I got the, I got the, uh, I pre-ordered the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and uh, so I kind of like took a little bit of a, a little bit of a break from Xbox, and, uh, and but uh, but I realized real quick that um, I uh, there's no way I could fly using a joystick. Or a, a, a yoke and a hat switch. That was unacceptable. So I uh, I ended up ordering Track IR right off the bat. As soon as I, I flew once, I ordered a Track IR because I had one, but I got rid of it, and um, I, I actually gave it to a flight school. So uh, so I went ahead and uh, I ordered one, and uh, it works quite well. So what I've learned how to do is kind of cool, is there's a way where you can uh, use a program called Vortex, V-O-R-P-X. And uh, basically that allows non-VR games to be in VR. And uh, so, uh, I gotta get back on course, that's my airport. I'm not landing there, but the landmark and uh so what it, what it allows you to do is it allows uh microsoft flight simulator to be seen in a in a vr headset then there's another program called open track what open track does is kind of make the vr headset act like uh like track ir so when you move your head back and forth when you turn that on it uh it moves it, it moves the view just like just like right now in uh in, in uh, track IR and uh, so that's all pretty cool the problem is is that the controllers don't work and uh, without the controllers working it's I, I just can't uh, it's not how I fly an airplane so so either I'm gonna fly it on a flat screen with track IR or in VR with 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 touch controllers and that day isn't here yet Yeah, I'm thinking it won't be until uh, so maybe November is what it's sounding like. Because they're basically waiting until the HP Reverb G2 is released. So, uh, so that'll be, uh, that will be a while. Yeah, I'm at about 6,700 feet, so I'm just kind of, kind of watching out for the mountains <laughs> to make sure, because some of them are definitely above that. So I gotta, I gotta kind of like stay on my course, so I'm sure I have a path. Yeah, it got delayed because because they're changing the lenses. They're uh, putting a better set of lenses on it. So, so the people that did like the the pre-release reviews. Uh, it'll be even better than what they were seeing. So that gets, uh, I, in, in my opinion, I think it's worth it, you know, that they're, um, that that's what they're going to do. So, and uh, I, I am going to use my, uh, uh, my index uh, controllers. I'm going to use that with the reverb. I've already bought the dongles that I need. And, uh, I just need to get some software working, so. Yeah, I, I think so. But uh, but if I can have my uh, Valve Index controllers with the uh, HP Reverb, oh, that'll be, that will be sweet. That'll be a lot of fun.
scenery is just so gorgeous. I mean, there's there's a lot of open spaces here in southern Arizona, but uh, it's just the way the mountains look and stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool. And I'm running uh, I'm running real weather, so uh, at least I thought I was. Let me check. Oh, clear skies. Whoops. <laughs> we'll see how bad this goes. Yeah, I put a little haze in. The weather itself is bad. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I had real weather and uh, I reloaded the plane after I crashed. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is pretty astounding. Somebody else is out here flying. Uh, another 172. A little bit lower than I am. No, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I can't remember what you're running. I'm running a, a 9700K and a 2080Ti. So, uh, so I'm and, and I'm I get anywhere between 50, 55, something like that. So I had the FPS counter on for a while and then I turned it off. It's, as far I mean. I just watch it. If it isn't not, I get no stutters. So hey, it's like it's good. I, I'm fine. Okay. I think I'm gonna be really crazy, and I'm gonna get the 3900, the RTX 3900, because I want more VRAM. <laughs> so, so uh, I think I'm doing that. That is one big card. Wow. I checked my case and it's like I'm good. <laughs> I got room. Oh, on your on your uh, on your Radeon, you got 16 gigs. Really, that is cool. I thought I thought some of the yeah yeah some of the AMD cards are pretty big aren't they? Cool, that is awesome. Gotta figure out what this lake is. The map isn't telling me what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I didn't fly a lot when I first got it. I watched a lot of, uh, well, actually, before I got it, I watched Twitch streams of uh, people that I knew were like real pilots. And uh, those are the Twitch streams I watch. Or either real pilots or people that had had flown in, in had flown before in real life. And uh, so I kind of like was watching and listening to what uh, what they were saying uh, to kind of make up my make my uh, my mind up. But uh, I am uh, very happy with this, with my decision. This is uh, this is pretty stunning what uh, what they pulled off. But uh, but you have not only Microsoft, but you got uh, Sobo, you got Black Shark. Another there's another weather weather uh, company. There's like three or four companies come together on this kind of pull this all off so it's it's more than just Microsoft uh, and they and mer merge together pretty good yeah yeah exactly that's right and uh, though that that's important um, and, and I was watching a lot of uh, real world pilots that are uh, bush pilots and uh, that Watching, watching what they were doing with the bush planes was pretty, pretty cool. So I'm not quite there yet, but um, I'm not far away. I'm not far away. And like I said, this is just a test stream, uh, just to make sure I've got pretty much, uh, I've got things tuned in the way I want. So far, I'm, I'm quite happy. I'm quite Yeah, thanks for the feedback on the volume. That's that's important. I would have found that out when I looked at the bot, but it would have been a little late. <laughs> and I pride myself in having um, I have a pretty good audio. You know, that um, you need to be able to be up above the up above. The... Yeah, good, good. That's that's important to me. I. Um, my VR streams are smooth, and, uh, and I, I was really hoping I could pull this off. So. But it's all so different. I had to figure out how to uh, how to get my OBS set up, and uh, there's a few things I still haven't figured out. Like I've got a I've got a map over here to the left of me, and uh, and I haven't quite figured out how to get it where it'll show up in the screen. But uh, like I said, it's the first. This is my. Uh, my first stream, so um, uh, I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy. Oops. I'm gonna jump out of the plane. I think I. Oh, let me close this window out. Actually, right now, I don't need this guy right now. So. Oh, this is... That's true. That's true why that guy's there. Yeah, it does because, uh, well, uh... No, I can't, I can't actually do that. But uh, yeah, out here, I've got to run. Um, I have my mixture. I have a, a, a SATIC. Um, give me a second. Out here, because of the elevation, I have to run my mixture about on my on my Satic uh, throttle uh, prop uh, mixture. I've got to run it out about three quarters of an inch to get the proper power. If I don't, 
um, then then I won't I won't get this kind of power out of the flame. So, so it it absolutely is worth it. That on the SR twenty two. I'll have to take a look. I'll have to take a look. Need to figure out how to get rid of this guy. Not sure what he's telling me. Yeah, it could be. There, there's more than one or two bugs. There's, there's actually a lot. <laughs> and uh, the first patch fixed some things that were important to me because, um, because I'm not using using VR. I'm using my uh, Satex. Uh, radio panel, switch panel, that kind of stuff. I have like one set of all of them. And uh, so the, uh, the, sim, the sim connect stuff was broken. When you used it, it would kill, it would kill the frames and it would, uh, it would stutter pretty badly. So uh, the fact that um, uh, that is, um, the patch fixed that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, I've I've flown a real 172, and, and there's a there's a bug in the in the autopilot that if I if I just want to fly on heading mode, if I click on it, I can watch the trim wheel moving. So if I'm trying to manually trim it, I'm fighting that moving trim wheel. I don't know why it's doing that, but it absolutely is, and. Uh, I got to figure out, you know, I, I assume that's a bug, but uh, I need to play with it a little more to be, uh, to be pretty, pretty sure. Oops. Wrong way, though. That is wrong. <laughs> I go back inside the airplane here. <laughs> Not careful, I'll be in Mexico here. On, get turned because you get the uh, orange line right there that's the Mexican border <laughs> looks like I got a wing tip there <laughs> get back over here <laughs> there we go two six five Yeah, like right now, the autopilot, it's pretty well trimmed out, so. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so so the trim wheel is, isn't moving right now. And, uh. So, it, so if I would put, uh. I'm trying to get myself in the right place. There we go. So I can put it on pause right there. So, <clears throat> ah, 
I heard about this going on. This is a bug. So, I have my, uh, I have my talk, my, uh, track IR, uh, pause map to my joystick button. So if I, if I move it over here and I go pause, so it's pause. Problem is, is a few seconds later, it releases it, but it's not, it, it releases that position, but it's still paused, which is kind of, kind of a little weird. Oh, yeah, right now. So, yeah. You can barely see the trim wheel. But for some reason, I can't have the heading, or the autopilot and the heading on, and not have the altitude. Because if I do, then the trim wheel, I go down. If I do this trim wheel, it, it constantly moves. And and if if I'm in heading mode, that shouldn't happen. It should it the, the trim wheel should be not being touched because I have I have a manual trim wheel. Also, right now I've I've moved my manual trim wheel. This may be bad. Oops. Hello. Uh, well, this could be bad. <laughs> Well, you decided to work? <laughs> okay, back in control. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> For some reason, when I was in pause, uh, it 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 kind of went a little a little bit wacko. So, uh, but uh, seems to be happy now. So, uh, we'll just let it go at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I. I physically moved the trim wheel. Normally what would happen is is the autopilot would disconnect. It would just disconnect. But it didn't disconnect. It just made it go a bit crazy. And uh, so so that is uh, that's another bug. <laughs> <coughs> So if I remember right, Sierra Vista is kind of across this little little mountain, and uh, about 27, 27 miles out that way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly hoping that hoping they will. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, because I mean, autopilot. I mean, it's supposed to like reduce your workload. Uh, the one, the one in this plane kind of uh, sometimes increases it. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I hope I hope they get it. Uh, yeah, I hope they get it kind of resolved. So, whoops. I didn't want to turn into that mountain. <laughs> That's a little taller than I am. Where I, where I, what my elevation is. So.
that's where uh, that's where my next waypoint is is that Bisbee that Bisbee uh, Municipal. I also got to figure out a zoom feature so that I can uh, like like zoom like zoom into that if this will work. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, so the mouse so the mouse will work. I just use the scroll wheel to kind of zoom me in. So yeah, and that runway's running like right there. I can I can clearly see. Yeah, the other thing I'm working on is um, to help with VR is a program called Voice Attack, and uh, it's like ten bucks. And uh, so I'm kind of I'm kind of playing with that program to, uh, to kind of alleviate using. Uh, kind of my goal is if I can get it figured out well enough that uh, that I might be able to fly in VR before it's officially released. But if I can get enough uh, voice commands working, you know, then then I may be able to get by with not having controllers. But uh, it's all just going to be a learning experience. So. But uh, but I actually bought the program. It was only ten bucks, so it wasn't too bad. And uh, and I I have used it. It absolutely does work. So, so that's kind of kind of another thing I've been playing with. What's the next one? Two nine one. Yeah, um, I may be like a special case because of, um, hey, look at this. Okay, I got them on. Because I'm using, uh, Valve Index controllers, um, I always have my controllers on my hands. And uh, so, so I have I have a yoke, and uh, and I have rudder pedals. Uh, but when I'm flying in VR in X plane, I have one button on my yoke that's mapped to a push to talk for pilot uh, to ATC. That's it. I don't use any other buttons, and uh, so. I use my touch controllers to start the plane, to pull the mixture in and out, pull the throttle in and out, to uh, adjust the trim, all the switches, adjust the radio knobs. I use my touch controllers for all of that. And if they don't um, implement that, um, where I'm, I can do that, that will be a disappointment to me. Uh, but, but like I said, it is because I use a valve index and it's how I um, fly an airplane in VR. Uh, and an X-Plane has made all those manipulators work quite well, um, that, that that works for me. I'm just hoping that they, uh, that they come close. Because if they don't, it will, like I said, it'll be a disappointment. But uh, uh, we'll work through it. And uh, like I said, uh, working with the uh, voice commands, uh, there, I, I can work my way through a lot of issues if I can use voice. So that's another option.
well, I better figure out. If my airport's here. Oh, not yet. There it is. Levy Tower Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is 21 miles southeast with Oscar to land. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra Levy Tower. Make straight in runway 26. Altimeter 29 or decimal 77 wind 288 at 15. Fly straight in runway 26 Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra. Yeah, so the winds are a little bit higher than were the last time I flew this. Runway 2 fix. So, I gotta look. So. Pretty seven. Alrighty, so I gotta get down to uh, pattern altitude. So, the airport... The airport is at 4,700 feet, so pattern altitude should be a uh, 1,000 feet above that. So right now I should be at uh, um, so 47, so I should be at 5,700. So we'll... Uh, oh, we'll turn my... We'll adjust my altitude. Whoops, to 57. That would have been bad. Actually, I'm going to go to 57, 6,000. Now well, that. Let's go down to 400 feet per minute. <clears throat> so. So my vertical speed, guy right here, it should be right around 400 feet. I got probably a little too much power, so I'm gonna pull the power a little bit back. Kind of help him. And I have uh, 6,000 dialed in, it should be, yes. So over here on my autopilot, I have 6,000 dialed in, vertical speed, a, uh, just have a four over there, but uh, not obvious right now. And the pause isn't working really well, so I'm not going to try to pause my track IR right now because it seems to not like me. So, so basically, on my uh, could have let me look. No, they're not lit up. So, but uh, but on my Satic uh, multi-panel. I have um, I have my VS is lit up, and uh, so it basically it's going to take me down at uh, 400 feet per minute until it reaches 6,000 feet, and at 6,000 feet it will level off. That's the plan. Yes, it did. So it's not quite at 6,000, but uh, but it, it'll just kind of uh, the vertical speed. You can watch it. It, it will uh, it'll slowly go up to zero. So as it goes to zero, this will be at 6,000. Perfect. Awesome. So a lot of the idle pilot stuff works. It's just not all of it. Correct, but that doesn't mean you can't do the same thing. I could have just as easily done the same thing with this autopilot panel that's in the plane. I could do the same thing. Uh, I just happen to have hardware uh, that I've had for quite a while that allows me to do that. But you can do the same thing in the plane. It, it'll work exactly the same way. So you just have you just have to do it with your mouse. That's all. So 
So basically, I'm going to say, I don't know where this airport is, even though I'm flying right to it. But I'm going to have him report. Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra is unfamiliar with the area. Request directions to the airport. Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra Airport is 11 o'clock, 1, 1 miles. So, so that did two things for me. It, it, one is, I mean, I made sure that that worked. But it also told me how far away from the airport I am. So I'm 11 miles away from the airport. And uh, so, so we'll say that I was not, um, I hadn't got rid of, gotten rid of uh, some altitude. I was still at like you know, high, higher than I was. Um, it would, it would kind of let you know like how much time you have, you know, to, uh, to get down to a pattern altitude. It said 11 o'clock, so that should be over here someplace. Airports are really not easy. What are you doing for? Oh, I'm okay. And it also could be because I am a little bit lower than uh, than than I was. So, so you're when you're up higher, it's sometimes easier to see the long length of the runway. It's 11 miles out. It's, I don't know if 11 miles out I could see a if I could see a runway at 11 miles out, even in real. I'll wait a little bit until I'm uh, about five miles out. Right there it is. Yeah, right over there. You can uh, you can absolutely see the runway. Yeah. Air Vista. Okie dokie. Go time. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> I mean, let me back out. <laughs> I don't want to be in that zoomed in view. Okay. I don't pile it off. Thank you. Okay, I got rid of a little bit more power. Go way high. not to turn it too steep. Trying to get it lined up first.
I like to be in the white arc. Where I put out my first notch of flap, but notch of flaps out. Notch of flaps. Not lined up too good. Gonna get it trimmed. Five. Why oh, it's pretty long. <coughs> Diving, diving pretty good here. Perfect. <laughs> wow, that was good. <laughs> Stall horn just before the wheels touch. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Do love flying it. I get up the one runway. Two, one decimal seven for Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra. Oh yeah, oh that was, that was perfect. <laughs> and I, I, I could see you. Could, I could, I could look out here, and I could see where the ground was. Not in VR. I'm in 2D, but I could see where the ground was and how far above the ground I was. I was where I needed to be. All I had to do was hold it. Texture was different. I wasn't sure I was going the right way. Um, but all I needed to do was just hold it at, at that pitch. And uh, sooner or later, uh, it was going to run out of speed. And it was going it was going to land. And uh, and it was just perfect where you just heard a stall horn just beep, boom. Feel the wheels touch. Slowly let the nose go down. You're good to go. That was fun. That was fun. So when I get to the, uh, oops, as I've already pre-picked my, uh, my parking spot, but nobody's waiting for me. Why not? Wow, that was a little crazy. <laughs> There's like a there's like a hill right there. I mean like like a real a real divot. <laughs> ah. Taxi ribbon should have told me where to go. Okay. Oh. I see this is where I'm gonna park. Okay, parking brakes on. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, that's that's kinda um that's kinda how you're supposed to land. Uh, you're basically supposed to stall the airplane right as the wheels touch the ground. That's kind of the correct way to do this. Okay, uh, so uh, this is where I spent uh, one year of my life in uh, 1973. So I'm going to get the plane shut down, and I'm going to take the old drone cam out, and I'm going to go fly with a drone. So, uh, the right way here is um, to turn off the avionics. And this, my instructors drill this in. Avionics first, before you do anything else. Then basically you pull the mixture all the way back. Basically starve the engine of fuel so the cylinders right now are empty. 
basically the engine ate up all the fuel there's nothing left so uh once that's done then i can turn off the batteries turn the starter off all other switches will go off oh i don't know if i've ever done this track ir this should be kind of entertaining oh Righty. Guess it actually works. Well, that's really bizarre. Leave any of this. Well, let me go up in the air a little bit. And uh, how I'm doing this is I uh, I went over to Walmart and I bought a twenty dollar uh, Xbox controller. <laughs> I spent a whole lot of money for this. Uh, uh, but this is how. Uh, if you want to run a drone camera. Just go buy one. 20 bucks? It ain't nothing. So, figure out where. Service? Not obvious. I would have thought I would have. One of these. Um, one of those things like that. So. Like two guys think is like right here. So I'm whoops. Not cut. Trying to get it to go forward. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to I'd still like I got two things that are doing altitude. Oh, I guess that is working. Just slow. All right. Time to go play. Drone can. Drones hold. Oh, that's why. Well, well, we'll we'll try to make it a little. Oh. Yes, that's better. So if I remember correctly, over in this area, yeah, 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 this is, so, uh, this is Fort Huachuca. So, uh, I taught, uh, yeah, 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 this looks, this looks good. Um, so, um, during 1973, when I was in the, in the Army, I come back from, I spent a year of my life here. And, I taught, uh, electronic warfare. I, uh. Basically, we taught people to, um, how, how was this? So, we taught, we taught people, uh, and, and to take our course, it was a year long. So, you had to be uh, in the service for four years to take the course. Um, so, basically, the concept was people enough general knowledge. And you have equipment that's modular. In other words, you can, uh, with your knowledge and with the manuals, if you can um, troubleshoot it to a component, to a, a module level, and you pull the module out, you put another module in, the equipment is fixed. Um, that was in 1973. At the time, I didn't understand how kind of forward thinking that. And later on in my life, when I was working as an electrician, that's how we fixed everything. Everything was fixed at a modular level. You didn't fix the modules. Somebody else, I mean, you sent them back to the factory. But um, but uh, some of my students, so we would get like a, uh, like an hour off for lunch. So, go over here. So I had a couple of student friends that um, owned... Uh, uh, that were, these guys must have had some money, but, uh, one of them had a Land Rover. So, see these roads here? Roads here? Well, we would go up these roads on lunch, and we would pick up camp to clean the environment up. 
but I'm not in a real airplane. <laughs> but we would go up these roads, and this is so cool that I can actually do what we used to do in that in that Land Rover. That's this cool, and uh, but that's what we would do. Yes, uh, and uh, that was so. That's how we would spend an hour for lunch is doing this. And the fact that I can actually land at that airport, get in the drone cam, and actually go up these fire roads, that's what they were. These aren't real roads. These, these are fire trails. And uh, to be able to do that, that's way awesome. <laughs> oh, I am too cool. Way too cool. Oh, back around. Yeah, <clears throat> so, uh, so I, I kind of, this is uh, such a great uh, first stream that uh, it allows me to kind of do this. And I want to, whoops, prone to move here. Yeah, with a, with a track IR and this drone, it's kind of a little weird. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, so this, this is because... Fort Huachuca was shoved up against the mountains, and uh, Sierra Vista was a little. But uh, yeah, this is this is perfect. It's um, yeah the uh, the place the place that I worked at I uh, basically, so I was in uh, Turkey for a, a year a year and a half, and uh, so uh, so when I. So I was in basic and then advanced and uh, advanced training and then then I went to Turkey and uh, <clears throat> let's see there was out of my class the majority of them went to here to Fort Huachuca and uh, three went to Brussels Belgium and two went to Izmir Turkey I went to Izmir so I was there for a year and a half and that was pretty cool um, I appreciate it more now than I did when I was there. As I was a kid, um, but um, so I got orders, and I at the end of the orders it said SDH. I went, I, I got a year left, and they're gonna they're going to send me to school? No, <laughs> no, I was going to teach. <laughs> so I taught electronics in this course. I I was I was an instructor. Uh, uh, I learned more teaching than I ever learned in any class. Um, one thing I learned is don't be, don't be unprepared. <laughs> the one class I went to teach, I had not paid attention and studied for. Um, it was one of the more uncomfortable moments in my life. <laughs> Got a whole bunch of, uh, of people that you're teaching, and some of them may outrank you. So I was an E5 at the time, a specialist, spec, spec 5, specialist. And uh, so you may have like a sergeant. A, uh, a, a staff sergeant on East, and uh, so if there was a chance they would be in, and uh, but but I went and I and I I was not ready. So they're asking me questions. I'm lost. I mean, it's kind of like not good. The only good thing is that sooner or later the class will be over and I can uh, kind of regroup. So uh, I never did that again. I did it once. <laughs> never did. It. It's pretty. Yeah, and they didn't have any of this stuff, like the solar cells. This is what's really neat. So, so what do you got here? You got solar array here, you know? It's kind of like, wow. And that this is all default. This is nothing special. This is what comes out of the box. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I'm not sure if I can get myself back to you. <laughs> oh, this is too Alrighty. <laughs> Who's the airport? Hold again. Yeah, so uh, so in this area, like uh, not very far from here, like I said, I took off from Benson. So Benson's not too far from here. Uh, Tombstone's not too far from here. Uh, 
Bisbee. Bisbee is a place when I was there, there was a big, big, big copper mine. Huge. That copper mine, it was an open pit. And uh, it had to be um, a mile down into that pit where you could see these trucks and they looked like toy trucks. But they were huge. I mean, they were really, really big dump trucks. So they basically take the ore out of the uh, out of the ground there, uh, put them put them in these big trucks. Then the trucks would basically drive in a circle until they got their way all the way up out of this mine, and they took it over to the crusher. So it would crush it, and that would then smelt. But it would smelt down and get the copper out. So, but um, but you could see in the area around there was mountains. From what was in that, there's just mountains of rubble, you know, from there. And uh, when I look at it now on Google, the hole's still there. They didn't fill it back in, and uh, which is kind of sad. But uh, but but when I was there, that was actually that was operational. I'm quite sure it's closed by now, because I was like I said was in the 70s. Um, but uh, but that was that was in the area. Uh, Douglas, Douglas is a town that's right on the border. Douglas is right on the border of Mexico. The other thing that's close to here is Nogales. Nogales is a dual town where uh, half of it's in Mexico, half of it. It's a and it's a border. When when we go across the border, normally that's where we go to in Nogales. But like I said, back at that time, I was in '73. Completely different, you know, than what we have now. But uh, I wanted to get down. I can get. This is what I wanted. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> okay. When I was first at this airport, uh, I looked and I went, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, these, these are saguaro cactus. And uh, they, are, they are unique to Arizona, the best of my knowledge. But when I was sitting in the airport, I looked out of the cockpit and I went, and they're like everywhere. Just, and, and they're about how they are. They're not, they don't take up the whole landscape, but uh, they take up a bit of it. And then the other thing you'll have is this low brush. So, so everybody thinks like like out in this area it's like a desert. It's not a desert. It, it's kind of like a kind of like a prairie. And uh, so, but you'll have this like low brush, you know, like all over the. And and then then you'll have these these cactus right around. So. And and actually they will burn. As uh, like outside of uh, Tucson, they had a fire. And uh, you could actually see cactus actually packing uh, from the from the fire from the brush and stuff. But this is pretty. This is quite neat. Well, I think I'm going to call this a day. Uh, I've had like so much. For everybody who uh, uh, who come along for the ride. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Benny, Benny, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, this has just been a great day. And uh, to anybody who uh, may be quiet, uh, I, uh, you want to uh, kind of like follow me along, just uh, click on the follow button. Uh, follow me. Because, yeah, uh, 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 like I said, I took about uh, two or a three week. Uh, on a vacation from uh, doing any streaming and uh, I did uh, so this is like the first time I've like got back in the streaming and it's a little it's different uh, than normally how I do a VR stream but uh, but I plan on doing uh, definitely streaming uh, uh, much more much 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 more and uh, and I really want to show off like some of the places that I have visited so, places I have been in real life, I'm going to go visit. And, uh, so that's kind of my, 
that's going to be my goal of uh, of this stream for some period of time. As uh, I've been to a lot of countries. I've been to Benny's country. I've been to uh, to Germany. Uh, I uh, I was, have been to um, I've been to Berlin. I've been to Paderborn, the airport. I've been to a few places, and I'm in quite a few other countries. So, so this will be kind of fun to go uh, kind of go explore. Cool. All righty. All I gotta do is find my OBS. <laughs> Once again, thanks so much, guys. Uh, this has just been a lot of fun. And uh, Benny, uh, thank you for uh, giving me the heads up on the audio so that uh, I've got it where uh, where I need it. With that, uh, you guys all have a great day. I know, I know you've uh, you've certain you've certainly made my day. Thank you so much. Bye bye.